Hey beloved, my name is Krista Pettiford. Welcome back to my channel. Today I want to share a prophetic word with you. For the, It's not just for the month of October, but it's for this season that we have entered into and going into 2023. And that is, the Lord says, it's already done. What you've been asking him for, what you've been praying for, what you've been crying out for, the Lord wants you to know that it is done, that he heard you when you asked him, when it was according to his will. First John 5, 14 and 15 says, this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have the petition that we've asked of him. We know that he has granted it to us. And so it is yours. It is already done. If you pray in according to the will of the Father and you know that God has spoken to you, giving you a prophetic word or you found a promise from God, or you've asked him for something that is based on principle in his word, then you know that you have it. The problem is we don't believe it, but Mark 11 chapter four, which has been a scripture for me this whole year that the Lord has been having me go into 11, 22 through 25 says, or 24 says, Jesus answered and said to them, have faith in God for shortly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things which he says will be done. For surely I say to you that whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things he says will be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, when you ask anything in prayer, believe that you receive and you will have it. So Jesus has already done what he's going to do. And I want to share something with you that I wrote in my journal a long time ago as Jesus was speaking to me about some things he had spoken to me, uh, some things he had promised me. And he said that it's already done, but your faith is going to have to bring it to shore. I'm re it, this is very old and it is written in pencil. I'm going to read verbatim. He, The Lord talking to me. And then I'm saying what he said, our faith is like the currents that the waves of your word, I'm writing what the Lord said, rides on. Your word can only go as far as my faith or our faith will take it. A strong ocean current will carry a wave all the way to shore. But if the current loses its strength, the movement of the wave stops and the wave fades in the stillness of the waters and never makes it to shore. Then the Lord said to me, your faith talking to me will have to carry the word to shore. And so the reason why I'm saying this, and then he took me to James, and he said that he gives to all men liberally and without doubting, only let it be asked, only let it be in faith, um, nothing wavering. And so we're talking about believing God. We're talking about that God said it's already done. The problem with us believing God and it already being done and receiving it and receiving the fullness of the promise and walking in the fulfillment of his promise is that we don't believe him. We don't believe that it's already done. And so when we don't believe that something is already done, our faith, we begin to doubt and our faith loses power because the enemy brings temporal things to us to get us to begin to doubt, to begin to get us to think that God is holding back on us, to begin to get us to settle for something less than God's best. Many of you are waiting on a spouse. Uh, I get that all the time on my channel because of prophetic word I gave at the beginning of the year about God restoring marriages. When many of you are waiting for God to restore your marriages and some of you are waiting for God to bring you a spouse. The truth is that 
God can do it. And he's already done many, answered many of your prayers. But when you ask God for something, instead of waiting for him to bring your spouse back, instead of waiting for him to bring you the right spouse Sometimes people give up. Sometimes people give up on the prophetic word like Abraham and Sarah and they had an Ishmael because they got tired of waiting. Their faith gave way under the pressure of of um, the time it takes for God's word to come to pass. He doesn't want that for you and he doesn't want that for me. He wants our faith to carry the wave of his word to shore. He wants our faith to be like a current. Just imagine that when you, I don't know if you've been near ocean, but I live in Southern California, which is near the ocean. And I grew up going to the beach and seeing the ocean, not just the bay, but the actual ocean. And when you are near the ocean, the waves come in and you have surfers and they ride those waves in. And if the wave the wave falls flat, they they fall in the middle of the ocean or they have to paddle back because the wave, the current of air that was pushing that wave to shore that was going to carry that surfer in loses its power. Then they then the board is not going anymore. And this is what the Lord is saying. His her, our faith is the wind, the power behind the word of God coming to pass when he's given us a promise. There are miracles and there are things that you can believe for and get right away. But when it comes to prophetic words that have due seasons, that have conditions on them, that God is foretelling something in your life that he's asked you to believe for, there are certain things that are just going to happen because God has written them in heaven and they cannot be undone. But then there are some prophetic words like the children of Israel. They did go into the wilderness. They went into um, the promised land, but a whole generation didn't make it in because of their unbelief, not because they were bad people, not because they, you know, had issues, um, human issues, but because of their unbelief, they died in the wilderness because of their grumbling and complaining. And so there is a part where you have to believe God for certain things, especially when it looks impossible, like Abraham, where it looked impossible. But the but the Bible says in Romans 4 that he began to give glory to God. He called those things that be not as though they were. He began to say his name was Abraham, father of many nations, instead of just high father, after the Lord told him to call himself that. That is calling those things that be not as though they were. God, that was doing what God did, calling himself what God called him, seeing himself as God saw him and speaking that out. And he began to believe and he gave glory to God and it, and he was strengthened in faith and he began to stop wavering because there was an Ishmael and there was a time when he wavered, when he took matters into his own hands, but when he did it God's way and believed him, that went away. And so I said all that to say that God has already done it. I've already said that. But Hebrews chapter 10 verses 35 through 36 says, Therefore, do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward, for you have need of patience or endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. There is, there, you have need of patience, beloved. You have need of patience. After you have done the will of God, after you have done everything you know to do, after you have done everything to know, you know to do and you're standing, you're going to have to wait in patience for God. I want to encourage you not to give up, not to faint, to keep believing, not to settle for something less, not to allow the enemy to bring something to you like he brought to Eve. God told her not to do one thing. He had something else for her, but she decided that after she listened to the voice of the enemy to deceive her and tell her that God was holding out on her, she went after something that she thought was better than what God had because God had told her what not to do. Maybe God has told you not to touch something in this season to wait for him because he has something better for you in the next season. I want to encourage you not to give in to the voice of the enemy, not to give in to 
your feelings and emotions and the temporal, temporary things that are going on around you. Know that it's already done. Claim the promise. Rest in it. Begin to call those things that be not as though they were. And wait for God to bring it to pass. The truth is that we cannot make it come any sooner than God has ordained it to come in its due season. We see that throughout the Bible. But what we can do is delay our breakthrough by disobedience, by unbelief. And God doesn't want that for you. And so if you need help staying focused on what God has called you to do, if you need help believing what God has spoken over you, and not being distracted, then I have a resource for you. You can download the five clarifying questions for every season of life that will help give you clarity so you can focus on what God has called you to do in this season and you won't be distracted and pulled in all the different things that lead to unbelief, lead to doubt, lead to impatience when God has told you to be patient. Um, so you can download that and there is the season's journal that will help you Pray through those things that God is calling you to do so that you keep your mind on those things throughout this season. You stay focused and undistracted and you pray into uh, the things that God has spoken to you every, every day. And so those are resources for you. The Seasons Journal is not free, but the five clarifying questions are free. The questions are in the journal. They're, they go a little deeper in the journal, but those questions are in the free downloadable guide as well. So I just want to encourage you, beloved, to um, stay patient in your season of waiting and know that God has already done it. It's already yours. That's not the issue. You don't have to fight for that. You don't have to pray from a place of trying to get God to do it. Just know that God has already done it and give glory to God. Thank him and rest in 